Hello and welcome to another episode of Pastor's Library. This is the channel where we discuss everything to do with theology books, books that might be on a reading list for your seminary or university course, bachelor's or master's degree, or simply books that have spiked your interest through seeing them on a bookshelf in a Christian bookshop or on your pastor's office desk. Whatever it is today, we just want to talk about books and maybe help you make some good choices about reading, maybe show you things that you will like or maybe things that you won't. So today, as ever, I'm going to ask you to give us a thumbs up if you like what you see um, or like what you hear. And also, please remember to subscribe if you haven't done already, to click on the bell if you haven't, because all that will do is let you know when we release another episode. So today I want us to talk about a series of commentaries, which are the Zondervan exegetical commentary. They do them on the Old Testament and on the New Testament. The first one in my hand is the Gospel of John. I want to just say about these books that they have remarkably good layout. Very white pages, very brilliant white, uh, very clear black font a good size of font, the layout is helpful, verses are written in bold uh, with the text underneath, with the explanation of the text underneath. Uh, there are lots of use of headings and tables. Really, it's, it's very good. The structure of the book is uh, talked about at the beginning of the book, and there's lots of useful, helpful hints. I would suggest to you, on the whole, these are very well designed commentaries and they're hard bound, uh, good solid products. And the general editor is Clinton Arnold for the, well, certainly for the New Testament. Yeah, Daniel Block is the editor for the Old Testament. So, what have I got to say about these? So bearing in mind these are accessible and helpful in the design, I think they are a book that would, you would quite easily go to repetitively because you would think, I found what I wanted quickly in them, and, and that is good. But there are certain clues that I have perceived as to the thread that runs behind them. For example, in Edward Clink's on the Gospel of John. He talks in John 9 about the man born blind and it's quite clear that his view is quite Calvinistic in his mindset of who God is. In, in other words, he sees God as a, an all-controlling person and that nothing happens without God's rubber stamp of approval, so to speak. And um, he really sees things in here that I would never dream of looking for. Some things which I found were a little bit offensive. I found that he, he minimised God a bit. I see God as a much bigger God, a God who is absolutely sovereign and omnipotent without being controlling. So that sort of puts me off a bit. And when I go through this, I find other examples of this low view of God. So whereas the book's well thought out accessible, I would suggest to you, if you have a Calvinistic mindset, this actually might be really good for you. But for me, or for Arminian or free will theist people or even openness people, um, I'm not so sure that that is a brilliant book to look at. Just staying in the New Testament for a moment, Thomas Schreiner offers us his work on Galatians and again this is beautifully laid out. They're following a very clear pattern on how a commentary should be delivered and I really like uh, that pattern. They offer shaded areas where they talk about a text in depth and deal with sort of difficult issues and I think that's very good. Schreiner is somebody who I've actually got quite a few of his books and I always want to listen to what he's got to say but I am always in two minds as to how much I enjoy what he says. 
he, he seems in some ways to me to be a man in two minds. For example, on the issue of women in Galatians, he says how important it is that we should promote their gifting, but he struggles a little bit with their place in the church. And you, you sort of get this idea that here's a man who is trying to be egalitarian in his view, but underneath is a very entrenched complementarian man. And he seems to have a little bit of a battle with himself over that issue. Also, when talking about the doctrine of justification, which let's be fair about it, that's a big deal in Galatians, he, he's weighing the traditional view of Paul and his teaching, and obviously the emphasis on justification, weighing it with the new perspective on Paul and seeing things in the new perspective that I don't really quite see. He doesn't quite know whether or not he approves of it. I would just suggest that whereas his writing does reveal his inner struggles, and thank God for that really, it, it does leave you with uncertainty, um, but Schreiner is definitely not to be dismissed. It's just an issue, really. In the book on Revelation, uh, which is by Fanning, this is not my favourite commentary on Revelation. I feel he misses the point of chapter 12, uh, which is a real go-to chapter for me on the understanding of Revelation. I feel that he seems to state the obvious without bringing out the gospel. So whereas I see the gospel all over the book of Revelation, he, he seems to ignore that from my point of view. Again, you can't beat the layout, the accessibility of this. Like the rest of the series, incidentally, the text, the verse that they're talking about is printed in bold in English and then has the Greek directly underneath, uh, which is a big plus if you're a Greek reader. I just think there are a lot better commentaries on Revelation and ones that maybe give multiple sides to interpretation, whereas I, I don't feel he covers other views quite as well. Ephesians, which is by the series editor Clifton Arnold, I, I actually quite like this one. I think it has a lot to offer, but um, I'm suggesting to you that perhaps it's not typical of the series, but it, it is good. 1 Corinthians is definitely written by Paul Gardner, who is not a Pentecostal, not a charismatic, it's quite clear in what he, he says that he isn't from that uh, background. I sort of think that when Pentecostalism is the largest growth area in the church worldwide, and whichever figures you look at, it's we're running at about three quarters of a billion Pentecostals worldwide. I think this is not the time, perhaps, to offer mainstay commentary series that have a, a, a 1 Corinthians volume that is not by a Pentecostal or by someone at least with an understanding of these matters. Uh, I suppose it's just um, when you read in 1 Corinthians 14 about speaking in tongues, I just think he doesn't quite get it. But to be fair, he, he does say what the differing sides think. You, you can't criticise him for that. And if, of course, you come from a cessationist background, uh, then you might actually really like this. I think this is not a book I struggle with quite as much with, as I do with some of these on the one ones, because actually he's very good on certain areas of 1 Corinthians. As much as I, I wouldn't really emphasise his teaching on chapters 12, 13 and 14, I do think broadly he's got a lot to say that's good. And of course, one thing we should always remind ourselves when we're reading theology, theology and commentaries in particular, is nobody is going to uh, agree with us 100%. And if we can't engage with those that disagree with us, then we haven't really understood what we should be doing, I don't think. 
I think we need to at least understand other people's points of view. You know, as someone who is very involved in what the Gather Network and the Evangelical Alliance in England call uh, unity movements, I meet regularly with leaders from other denominations. And the truth is, it's good to be able to understand where they come from so that you aren't immediately asking questions that uh, are maybe difficult or maybe considered to be impertinent. So Paul Gardner is definitely worth reading. It's just maybe if you're a Pentecostal or a charismatic, you might struggle with some of his interpretations. Now, the funny thing is, I've only got a couple of volumes from the Old Testament, but actually, I think these in general are a lot better. Daniel Block is the general editor of the Old Testament, and Daniel Timmer offers us Nahum, and Kevin Youngblood, who, to be fair, I've quite liked other things I've read by him, offers us a very good commentary on Jonah. And both of these commentaries, I feel found I got a lot from. Really, you can only say whether you personally feel that you are enriched when you read something. And for me, uh, I, I found, it, found it good. I am looking a little bit at the moment on commentaries on the Book of the Twelve, commentaries on uh, Minor Prophets, and I've got other pastors' libraries planned on that. Uh, particularly one coming up soon on Jonah. And these are really important books, so much to learn from them. And the, the great layout and planning of the Zondervan series really helps you access the information in these books. So what am I saying? Um, the Zondervan exegetical series, which is not as easily accessible in the UK as perhaps the, the New International Commentary on, on the New Testament. It is a very well thought through from a point of view of design, which frankly you really ought to expect that from Zondervan. I think particularly the New Testament leans broadly to a Calvinistic viewpoint. And I would say that whereas it's not true of all of them. Some of them do not really handle alternative viewpoints within the volume. And realistically, we live in a world of alternative viewpoints. There isn't just one interpretation for, of the New Testament. Everything comes through our own lens, our own worldview. And um, I just think that they're not brilliant at handling that aspect. Will you find something helpful in any of them? Yeah, yeah, you will. Um, they are good. I would just say to you, I don't think they're quite in the class of the New International Commentary on the New Testament, New International Commentary on the Old Testament. I tend to sort of have those as a, as a particular line in the sand, so to speak. I would suggest they're not up to that level, but they, they are good. They are worthwhile. If you uh, come across one or two of them on, on the cheapish side, uh, then um, why not try them out uh, and see what you think? If you're wanting to invest in a series, uh, then if you are coming at the scriptures with a Calvinistic mindset, then these might be really excellent for you. If you're not, I would think twice. I would look at a series that is slightly broader in its thinking. Um, so these are not to be laughed at because they are really well designed. If the word biblical commentaries had been treated in the way these had, uh, we would have probably the best set of commentaries in the world with them because content, they tend to be brilliant, but layout is absolutely appalling. So these are, there is something to be said for them, but I hope this has helped you. I hope it's helped guide you a little bit. I hope that you are able to access these commentaries, at least to some degree, so that you can appreciate their worth and what they may help you with.
I hope that's something that you've liked. If it has, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to leave comments under the page. It's really helpful and we do try to respond to comments. And until next time, I'd just like to say goodbye and God bless you. Bye.